Good morning, guys. Today, we're going to talk about my TRT protocol and my quantitative numbers. Now, TRT is personalized. There is not a one-size-fits-all methodology and there are no optimal numbers. But you guys are clearly curious about my protocol and my numbers. So for the sake of no longer having to answer the question ad nauseum, I will tell you. But you can't have a one size fits all methodology. My requirements will be different to yours. Whilst we share commonalities, my physiology is slightly different to yours and my requirements are slightly different to yours. So I may feel best with a free T of 0.6, you may feel best with a free T of 0.8 and da da da. And our fixation on numbers will be our undoing. And it's quite clear that when you have low testosterone, you fixate on a cure. So everybody wants to reverse the negative symptoms of low testosterone and you place your trust in me to do that. But I can only optimize your hormones through the use of testosterone, HCG and possibly adjuvants. But the rest is up to you. So it's a matter of focusing on the essentials, lifestyle, interesting sleep, stress reduction, nutrition, physical exercise. So I have all sorts of guys from all sorts of walks of life and backgrounds, ranging from the average schmo to uh, ex-professional athletes and uh, people you wouldn't want to mess with. Um, they get gold standard, the people that don't know that. Everybody gets gold standard. So we're going to talk about my TRT protocol. You can't have a sledgehammer approach to TRT. It's not about getting high. It's not about getting low. It's about being normal. Because normal, we're fighting and we're fornicating. Hopefully, more fornicating than fighting. TRT is like sex. There's nothing wrong with a quickie, but ultimately, if you go slow, you will have the desired outcome. Um, so my TRT protocol, as you guys know, I'm a massive proponent of daily testosterone sipinate injections and daily HCG injections. Because I believe this is the closest way of mimicking natural physiology. Hormones need to be stable day in, day out, irrespective of how close you are to the injection day. So traditionally, we've always measured testosterone levels on TRT in a trough because we want the lowest number. But we don't really want the lowest number. We want stable numbers constantly. So we don't actually want that. We want to have stable levels. Test sip is a short to medium acting ester and its mechanism of action allows for stability. And the daily injections allows for that little bit of a peak. So testosterone follows a diurnal pattern. So naturally, testosterone levels rise overnight as your anabolic processes predominate, which is why when you're natty, and we want to get a reference to how high your testosterone is, we measure it in the morning. So it gives you an indication of how effective the anabolic processes are overnight. Because obviously during the day, if I've got a testosterone of 30 at 8 o'clock, if I've run a marathon that day, levels will probably drop more than if I sit on the couch and Netflix and chill. I suppose it depends on how hard you chill. Now that would be a marathon, wouldn't it? Um, so that's why we measure levels in the morning and we measure levels 
level measurables, measure levels um, in a trough, so pre-injection, irrespective of whether you're on dailies or less frequent injections, which you shouldn't be, unless you're on a different ester, such as an anthate, which I recommend every other day, and Nibido, which I recommend either weekly or every two weeks, depending on your SHBG. So, my TRT protocol, 12.5 milligrams, which is 0.1 mil daily by the subcutaneous route, and 100 IU, so 0.1, because obviously we mix 5,000 units in 5 mil, uh, of HCG daily via the subcutaneous route. I do both of my injections in the morning because anecdotally, HCG can wake you up in the evening. And I believe it is probably the most effective way of doing it from trying to mimic this physiological response, but it's probably a bit of hocus pocus and bro science, but it makes sense. And again, doing daily injections, literally it becomes simply part of your day. So wake up, have a scratch, <laughs> uh, go for a pee, put the kettle on, do your pins, bang reflex it should just become part of your day and one of the benefits of sub q over im is lack of pain honestly it's pretty much painless um no pain no gain um but yeah no it's um it's literally of no thought pattern not thought patterns nothing it's just bang wham bam thank you ma'am um so yeah 12.5 milligrams daily of test sip, 100 IU of HCG. So that's 84 milligrams a week and 700 uh, of HCG. Now the Americans, crazy, crazy Americans, um, often start off on a starting dose of 200 milligrams a week, which I think is absurd. Slow and steady, baby. So I titrate my guys up or down according to the physiological effect their TRT protocol has on their bodies. It's an evolving process. So go too hard, you cause a massive insult, and then you're essentially playing catch up. So it's one of the commonest mistakes with guys who have high SHBG is to give them a big dose and make it a less frequent injection. So the premise behind that is to lower the SHBG dramatically, but what you do is you cause that insult and then you're playing catch up. So I have guys who have had massively high SHBGs and through adopting micro dosing, again, the premise behind micro dosing is using the minimum effective dose in the most effective way we do not want to cause a physiological insult. If the SHBG is up there for a reason, and normally it is, so obviously you need to address reversible causes, hypothyroidism, liver dysfunction, stress, etc., poor sleep, um, you don't want to cause a dramatic reaction. So your body has to adjust. So we've successfully lowered SHBG to a optimal level. This word optimal, has been bastardized by the bros, but we'll say healthy level. And healthy is not average. Healthy is not normal in this modern society. Healthy is a level whereby all the other parameters that are going on in the body are also normal. So again, there's so much to TRT. Uh, you can optimize your hormones, but you won't necessarily feel amazing unless you address everything else and you make sure that all the other parameters are in check. So again, the idiots, bang up your dose. So if your low libido is not because of low testosterone and you keep banging up the dose, you may see a temporary improvement, but ultimately there'll be a negative health outcome. So what are my numbers 
on 12.5 milligrams of test sip daily and 100 IU of HCG daily. Total testosterone is 32.6 nanomol per litre. My free testosterone, 0.614 nanomol per litre. Estrogen, estrogen, oh my word. Everybody's worried about estrogen. Um, I've never had a problem with estrogen. So my estrogen on that protocol is 89 p mol per litre. The only times I ever feel I have a little bit of um, excess estrogen is after a session. <laughs> I have half a bottle of gin. <laughs> that's, that's when I feel I've got a little bit of E2, but it's a very transitory and temporary effect. So, um, yeah, I've never needed an AI. And as you guys know, if we ever prescribe an AI, it is carefully microdosed. So it's the minimum affected dose and it is constantly reviewed because we want them off of anything apart from what's body identical. So testosterone and HCG ideally. That should be the goal of TRT to have you on the minimum amount of drugs to achieve balance. Um, SHBG 45, so pretty healthy SHBG. So I'm actually super stoked with that. Um, so we know that SHBG acts as a buffer. So testosterone, DHT and estradiol have super short half-lives and you need to use testosterone, DHT, estradiol 24-7. So SHBG acts as a buffer so that you can help facilitate the primary purpose of these hormones, growth and repair. DHT. Now we don't tend to measure DHT routinely because we never really see uh, an excess of DHT. But I had mine measured just out of curiosity and they came back at 3.37. So um, high normal. So super stoked. Again, don't do anything for it. Um, don't even take creatine, used to, um, but I don't take that anymore. So as you can see, with 84 milligrams a week of testosterone and 700 IU of HCG, I can have optimal levels. So no negative symptoms, and I feel cool, calm, and collected. Regular morning wood for those who wanted to know. Nobody wants to know that. Um, what about everything else? Because it isn't just your male hormone profile that gets influenced by testosterone replacement therapy. My full blood count, so hemoglobin 175, HCT, which 175 is a little bit high actually, so it's higher than the average, but my HCT is 0.494. Um, which means that actually my haemoglobin levels are cracking. And obviously haemoglobin carries oxygen to the tissues. Um, my creatinine always sits high, so it's currently 144, which would ring major alarm bells with the NHS. But obviously I'm pretty well built and I eat a lot of protein. A lot of protein, mate. Um, so my creatinine is quite high. And I don't have acute kidney injury. <laughs> I hope not anyway. Um, no, I obviously don't. It's always been that high. It's, it, 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 my creatinine goes between about 120 and 150. Um, so yeah, sitting at 144 at the moment. Lipid profile. Again, cholesterol slightly high, 5.14. Who cares? I'm not actually interested in cholesterol. Um, what I'm more interested in is my cholesterol to HDL ratio and my HDL, which are both absolutely cracking. So HDL's 1.59. Thyroid, perfect. Um, liver function, HbA1c, which is obviously an indicator of diabetes, perfect. So, cracking along, which is good but it isn't just down to testosterone and HCG. It's a down to, guess what? 
me putting the hard work in. Me putting the hard work in every day. Most days at least. Um, so, should you aim for those numbers? No. Um, but, those numbers are good for me. I've previously done a video um, and my levels then were 0.85 routine. Actually, I don't like being up at 0.85 anymore. I've got a lot of stress. You guys, you guys drive me mad. So I think um, when I run high, it contributes to a little bit of mental discord. So actually, I like to be about 0 0.6, 0 0.7. That's probably good for me right now. If my levels go higher, my HCT goes up. So when we talk about normal levels, my best marker, because obviously I am stable, daily injections, etc., etc. Um, if my levels go up, my HCT goes up. So you can't cheat. It's, it's not possible. You can't cheat your body. So, um, yeah, m my optimal levels uh, are probably... I'm probably spot on right now. So total testosterone, 32.6, free T, 0.614. Um, so I'm quite happy. So, there you go, guys. Personalised medicine... It isn't about chasing my numbers. It's about a TRT protocol that makes you, the individual, balanced and appreciate that it's a journey. And I don't change my protocol ever now. It's li literally stable, 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 stable. So if I had to change, um, it would be because something was up. Now, I'm a bit of a chunky monkey now at the moment, 15.9% body fat. So that's a bit heavy for me, actually. So um, I'm going to look down to get down to about sort of 12, 13. Um, but obviously, th that would only have a positive impact on my estradiol. So, yeah, I, I won't need to change my protocol. But a lot of guys who are chunky monkeys, who have bad lifestyles, um they need to make those necessary changes and your TRT protocol will have to be titrated according to your physiological state. So if you want to be your own best friend, eat a healthy diet, weight management, get exercise on a daily basis, not twice a week, get on it like a carbonate. 